Hi, welcome to this video series on cryptography. Today, I'm going to talk about an interesting problem related to um, exchanging messages from Alice to Bob, but without exchanging the keys. Okay. Of course, we want the message to be sent in a confidential manner, right? So that the eavesdropper uh, won't be able to, to listen to the traffic and, and make sense out of it. So the idea is uh, beautiful, okay. Um, it's based on the commutative cipher that I talked about in the previous uh, segment. So this protocol is called three pass protocol. There are a couple of variants of this and I'm going to focus only on one of the variants, which is uh, straight from the idea of difficult key exchange more or less. Um, so, so the way it works is as follows. We have two participants, Alice and Bob, and they wanted to uh, um, talk to each other. So Alice wants to send a confidential message to Bob, but Alice and Bob don't have the same key. So Alice cannot uh, apply AES or something like that um, because Bob doesn't have the same key. So how do we achieve this goal? So it turned out that we can use a simple trick to achieve this goal. And I will explain this trick now. The trick is simple. Um, all we're going to do is apply a three, three pass protocol in, a, in an interesting way. So what does that mean? What I mean by interesting way is as follows. Alice and Bob first uh, have to generate their own private keys, okay? There are two keys actually, encryption key and decryption key. Bob also has encryption key and decryption key. By the way, in contrast to public uh, uh, key cryptography, all the keys here are private to the participants, okay? So Alice and Bob have their own keys. Nobody knows S and T other than Alice. And similarly, nobody knows R and Q other than Bob. So what Alice does is actually, she picks a message M that she wants to send to Bob. She encrypts that message using a specific cipher encryption algorithm, which is, I will explain in a moment what that uh, algorithm E is actually. So, and then what, um, uh, what uh, um, Bob does is actually, Bob actually just simply um, re-encrypts the, uh, the cipher text using his um, uh, private key R, okay? So Alice gets the double encrypted um, message M, okay, basically. But Alice cannot decrypt it because she doesn't have uh, R, R, right? Okay, so what will Alice do with it? Uh, now comes the property of the uh, 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 commodity cipher, okay? So the commodity cipher has this interesting property that if you encrypt a message M using a key S and then encrypt that cipher text using another key R, that's same as encrypting the message M using key R first and then encrypting it again with message yes, uh, key yes, okay? So you could swap the order of the keys essentially, that's what the commutative cipher is saying. Okay, now comes the, the trick uh, Alice will do. See, see, Alice has actually basically, uh, 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 has a cipher text uh, encrypted using um, her private key yes, right? So if she now applies decryption algorithm, using her private key T, what will happen? Well, she will get the cipher text encrypted using Bob's uh, encryption key R, right? So she can just send E of R comma N to Bob. And Bob will be able to decrypt that because he knows the Q and he will get back M. That's basically it. Okay, so uh, let me now walk, walk you through that part of the uh, protocol. So as I said earlier, because of commutative cipher, um, Alice applying a decryption um, using her dec dec decryption key T on the doubly encrypted play payload, um, she will actually send a, a message uh, which is basically encrypted using Bob's uh, encryption key, okay? That, that's because of this, this important commutative cipher property, okay? R and S you can rearrange uh, because S and T are um, uh, encryption and decryption keys. This S will cancel out with the T when you do the decryption. So essentially, Alice has uh, a message M encrypted using Bob's uh, encryption key, which is like a yes now. Um, now, uh, Bob will be able to decrypt it because he has the corresponding uh, uh, um, encryption key uh, and decryption key pair, right? That's basically it. So now I will show you how this algorithm works. Um, using my implementation. So maybe quickly explain to you uh, why this, this uh, commodity property important. Okay, or how can you achieve this commodity property? So one of the implementations that we talked about earlier is based on uh, Puglig-Hellman uh, algorithm, right? Okay, so in that algorithm, encryption function 
is basically defined as follows, right? If you need a key, let me call the key as A and a message M. How did we how did we do this? We just did M power A mod P. Okay. Uh, P is the group order. Uh, P is the group. The order of the group is uh, P minus one. Okay. P is a prime. Okay. Anyway. Um, so why is this uh, a commodity cipher? We talked about it earlier. Suppose you have um, another key B, right? We can do this quick math now, which is basically nothing but M power A B, right? I, I leave the mod P because this is mod P is repeated. So you just uh, can rearrange because of uh, the properties of exponent. And this is nothing but encryption of uh, um, encryption of message. Um, okay, well, this is basically the, the, the story. Encryption of M power P about B uh, using the key A, which is nothing but what we see here. Encryption of B, right? Uh, encryption of message M using uh, key B. So we proved that this particular cipher is commutative and because of commutative cipher property, uh, we were able to just apply the decryption part on the doubly encrypted payload, which clearly implies Bob can simply decrypt it using uh, his uh, decryption key. Okay, so let's go to the implementation very quickly and then uh, run through it, okay? So what I'm going to do is walk you through the implementation, okay? This is similar implementation to the Booglick Hellman algorithm that I talked about. So what I did actually, I just rearranged the parameters because usually we put encryption first, encryption key first in the message. I, I forgot that in my previous segment, sorry for that. But anyway, um, so everything is the same except the last part, right? Alice generates um, encryption keys uh, S and T. She keeps it private. Nobody's aware of that except her. Similarly, um, Bob does it here. First step is Alice encrypts the message M using uh, her private encryption key, yes, okay. And then she sends that encryption, encrypted message, right, alias ciphertext to Bob. Bob simply takes the ciphertext and again re-encrypts it, but using his encryption key R. Okay, now what does uh, Bob do? Bob sends that back to, to Alice. As I shown on, this, on, the, on the sequence diagram, Alice simply decrypts it, decrypts the doubly encrypted ciphertext, okay, using uh, Alice's um, private, uh, Decryption key T, right? Alice has two keys. Remember, S is an encryption key, T is the decryption key. Okay, now Alice sends the encrypted message to, to Bob. Bob simply decrypts it uh, using his um, uh, decryption key uh, Q, and that was possible because of the uh, commutative cipher property. Okay, and and we can assert that the message that uh, Alice will get is the same as the message M. Um, Actually, let me let me rephrase that. The message uh, that Bob will get is the same as the message um, Alice sent. Okay, so that's what I'm asserting here. The message itself is basically simple, right? Demo of um, oh, this is not a good message. Demo of uh, three phase protocol. Three uh, phase uh, protocol. Okay, so okay, so let's run it. What you're seeing is a number, which is nothing but the uh, ASCII representation of this the string. That's not so exciting. It's just converting it to ASCII value. What is exciting is that. The message M is the same as the message um, that uh, uh, Bob received from, from Alice. Otherwise, this, this assertion would have failed, okay? So we can actually, if you wanted to be sure, we can also even print the message. So it must be the same text. And uh, I need to be putting a bracket. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, the first is the message um, Alice prepared. This is the message Bob received. Okay, as you can see here, the only thing they both did was actually using the encryption and decryption functions. And because of the commodity cipher property, Alice was able to encrypt the message using uh, Bob's uh, encryption key, although Bob's encryption key itself is private. So that, that's a beauty here. Okay. Anyway, a um, couple of important things to note is that this cipher algorithm or the protocol um, is actually deterministic. Okay. If I run it again, you get the same uh, uh, cipher text. Um, the reason being that um, the, the algorithm, the encryption algorithm is actually deterministic algorithm, okay? There's no randomness, which may be a problem in some cases, but, but um, is actually desirable in uh, homomorphic encryption, okay? So um, I will talk about homomorphic encryption later. So, so the point I wanted to highlight though is that commodity cipher is actually helping us to, to achieve some interesting way to communicate uh, between two parties without having a key uh, agreement in place, okay? That's basically what I wanted to show. Thank you very much. And uh,